Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Chaplet Monday. Each week we meet together at 8 p.m. Central Time and we get to know uh, a different saint each week and their chaplet prayers. So we've been doing this for two years now and we've had some repeats, but very often we get new saints, like tonight. Tonight we have a new saint, Saint Marianne Cope. And I don't know if any of you have heard of her before. I had never heard of her. St. Marianne. She has a tiny saint. And so part of how I look ahead for saints that we'll do in the upcoming weeks and months is to see which of the saints have a tiny saint equivalent. Um, and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, that is a really precious tiny little silicone um, rubber keychain. Uh, I don't have St. Mary Ann Cope right now. They're all back in my office because I collect them for the teens as well. And so this Wednesday night, we will talk about St. Mary Ann Cope. And then the following week, I'll ask if anyone remembers who the saint was for the last week, and they'll receive that tiny saint if they remember correctly. So it's a lot of fun and it helps them to get to know different saints. And it prepares them for their confirmation when they're going to choose a saint name, take on a saint's name for their confirmation. So that's the motivation behind that. And it's what inspired me to start Chaplet Mondays along with COVID shutdown. And so we're back to be, we're glad to be praying back in person, but I think Chaplet Monday will remain online for the time being because we have so many that join us from out of town, from out of the area. And we're just happy you're all here. Hi, Bienvenida, like Bienvenida. Um, and we have a lot of people who join us and because it is later in the evening, it is more convenient to be doing it in your living room as well. So that's so amazing. Um, hi, Lenora. Mary, Catholic daughters have had so many compliments about their fundraiser, their turkey dinner, makes the tiredness worth it. I have to say it's the best turkey dinner I've ever had in my life. And your stuffing, I'm just gonna say, Mary, I don't like stuffing except for Catholic daughter stuffing. That's the only stuffing I will eat. I won't eat my mom's. I won't eat <laughs> my <laughs> in-laws. I don't like stuffing, but I love Catholic daughter stuffing. Uh, and so for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, the Catholic Daughters of America, they have a chapter at Holy Rosary and many of your churches may have a chapter as well. So you should definitely look into it. It's a women's group that uh, meets together for fellowship and prayer and support and love and uh, friendship. They're beautiful and they do a lot of things to serve their own parishes um, and they also host fundraisers and things like that. So they're a beautiful group and if you have a Catholic Daughters at your parish you should definitely look into it and if you belong to Holy Rosary and you're not a Catholic Daughter but you are a female then you should also look into that as well and join the Catholic Daughters at Holy Rosary. Uh, so thank you all for being here tonight. We will be talking about St. Marianne Cope, uh, an incredible female saint, and she is connected to St. Damien of Molokai, who we have talked about before. Molokai is in Hawaii, and to this day still has a colony of lepers who live there. And back in the time of St. Damien and also St. Marianne Cope, uh, they didn't have the medical um, knowledge that we have now. And so many people with leprosy were just um, cast out of town and sent to Molokai in Hawaii, where they would live together and basically die together. Um, medical breakthroughs have happened now. We are able to stop leprosy for the most part. Uh, but it does still kind of run rampant over there. And so we continue to pray for all those who have leprosy and all those who are orphans because their parents died of leprosy. So we'll be getting to know St. Mary Ann tonight and her impact in the community over there and her connection also to St. Damien of Molokai. So I don't know if any of you remember talking about St. Damien of Molokai last year in 2022. I talked about um, a priest friend of mine, um, Father Viet, who uh, feels very connected to the lepers, he uh, he actually helps and um, 
um, founded a colony for lepers in Vietnam, his home country. And so he does the same thing as St. Damien in caring for them. He visits them. He um, raises funds for them as well. So he takes care of the lepers in Vietnam. And it's interesting to even be talking about leprosy uh, because it is a sickness and illness that existed in the time of Christ himself. And we know that Jesus healed a leper. Uh, you can watch an incredible depiction of that on The Chosen. Um, or you can read about it in scripture. It's still incredible. Either way, but when he heals that, um, that man of leprosy, it's pretty phenomenal. So we are going to get to know St. Marianne, and we are going to pray with St. Marianne later this evening. And so for those of you that are joining us for the first time, we ask that you put the intentions of your heart into the comment section while we're talking about the life of St. Marianne. And when we move into the chaplet portion of the evening, we will lift your prayers up together and we will be praying together for your intentions. Now, if you ever have an intention that you don't feel comfortable naming, you can always put personal intention or private intention and we are happy to lift that up in your name. And at least you know that we are still praying for that intention, even though it's very personal and very private to you. So please feel comfortable. Uh, please uh, feel free to be putting in all of your intentions into the comments. So St. Marianne Pope actually was born in Germany, um, but she emigrated very soon after her birth to the United States. She was born in 1838. Uh, I think, I believe, oh yes, when she was one year old, that's when her family moved to Germany. And her birth name was now it's pretty long, Maria Anna Barbara Koob, and she's known as Barbara Cope before her, um, before she became a sister. They're, they changed their name when they came to the United States, like so many immigrants had to do, so that it could be pronounced, and so her, her last name used to be Koob and was changed to Cope. So that's how we have her name today as St. Marianne Cope, but she didn't change her name to Marianne until she became a sister later in life. So they settled in Utica, New York City, where there was a very big community of Germans there as well, German immigrants. Um, she attended a church school there until she was in the eighth grade. But by then, her father, who had been very sickly, he was completely homebound. He was an invalid. And she ended up dropping out of school in eighth grade to work in a factory to help support her family. Um, years after that, in 1862, her father did pass away. Her siblings were now grown up and could care for themselves and her mother. And so she felt that she had the freedom to discern the religious life. And I think she had already been praying about it. She already felt it in her heart. But now she felt that she had the freedom, the permission from God. Now that her family could take care of themselves, she felt safe to move into that deep discernment and to move in with a religious order. And she became a novitiate of the Sisters of the Third Order, regular of St. Francis, which were based in Syracuse, New York. That is when she took the name Marianne, and so then she was Sister Marianne Cope after that. As I had mentioned, there, were, there was a huge community of German immigrants, most of them not English speakers. And so as a sister, she was called to become a teacher and later a principal at a school for immigrant children. She also helped direct the opening of no, not just one, but two Catholic hospitals in central New York. She arranged for students from the Geneva Medical College of New York to work at the hospital, but she, get, she said that the patients should have permission to refuse treatment from those doctors in training. And this is actually one of the first times in history that patients were given the right to refuse treatment of all time. I think that's pretty significant and pretty awesome. In 1883, Marianne would become the superior general of her whole congregation. And this is when her, her order received a letter from King Kalakua of Hawaii begging for help with his lepers. So this is the first time she gets asked of her order gets asked to send people to help with the lepers in Hawaii. Now, this king had already asked um, 
over 50 other religious orders to send help and had been declined because leprosy was so contagious and so dangerous and quite often fatal a lot of religious orders did not feel comfortable sending their sisters and their brothers and their priests but Marianne would not be deterred and she would not live in fear so she actually um, left Syracuse with six sisters so she not only said yes she said I will come that says a lot about how she wants to um, model what her sisters would behave like how her sisters would live not in fear but in um, generosity and compassion so mother Marianne and the sisters arrived on November 8th of 1883 where they helped manage an island on the um, I mean, a hospital on the island of Oahu, that's where victims of leprosy were sent for triage and then they were sent back to Molokai. That's where all severe patients were sent was to Molokai. So if they couldn't be, if they couldn't be healed and if they weren't going to get better, people knew that they would give it to everyone else. And so they banished them to Molokai. Uh, the next year, Mother Marianne helped also to establish uh, another hospital on the island of Maui. And in 1888, Mother Marianne and two sisters went to Molokai to open a home for the unprotected women and girls there. Um, the Hawaiian government was nervous to send them, thinking that it needed to be men who went because it was such a dangerous mission. Uh, and But she uh, would not take no for an answer. On Molokai, she took over the home that St. Damien had established there. And in fact, she was there when Damien contracted leprosy and she was one of the sisters who cared for St. Damien of Molokai until his passing. So she was very directly in contact with him, um, with his prayer life, with his uh, charism, with his love for the lepers. And she was inspired by that, but also given the honor and the grace of being able to care for him at the end of his earthly life. Mother Marianne would change life in Molokai. So St. Damien loved those lepers, but Marianne brought laughter and games. She brought color back to these people that had been just thrown away by their own communities. She encouraged the ladies and brought colorful fabrics, gave them scarves to wear and dresses to wear, giving them dignity back to this broken body. You know, um, it's, it's a very, very harsh, disease and your body just falls apart it it deteriorates and so you can feel obviously very ugly and very awful and and like you should be hiding in a cave and Marianne gave them back that dignity that love of life and color and laughter and fun um from there she was called back to Oahu to deal with some um, drama at the hospital she had left there. The government had put someone else in charge, a government official in charge of the Oahu hospital. She did a little investigating. She did not like the direction he was taking and she told the government, he leaves or I do. And the government loved her so much that they uh, took care of the, that administrator and put her back in charge and allowed her to decide who would be the administrator of that hospital. So at this point, Marianne is getting older, but her workload is not decreasing. It continues to, I mean, she won't turn anybody down and she continued to give and give and give. Now, one thing that's beautiful to mention here is she never did contract the disease of leprosy. So God allowed her to continue in her mission, loving and serving the poor and the lepers and the dying and giving her sisters that inspiration. Uh, um, helping to curb their fear, helping to increase their gift of self and generosity and love of these sick people. Um, their order continues to attract new sisters all the time. They continue to care for the lepers over there even to this day. Um, at this point, her regular health was deteriorating. She was limited to working in a wheelchair, but she never stopped. She never stopped caring. She was always optimistic 
She always had this peace about her and she always had this trust in God. And that inspired all of her sisters and her entire order. She ended up passing away of natural causes on August 9th, 1918. And in the years following her death, there were many, many miracles attributed to her. And you can continue reading the paragraph uh, below. She ended up being canonized by Pope Benedict, another saint canonized by Pope Benedict. Two weeks ago, we talked about a saint who was canonized by Pope Benedict and how special that is now that he is passed. So the two of them are together in heaven now, um, which is beautiful. Um, and as, as Benedict would um, be canonizing her, the, the cardinal who presided at this mass at St. Peter's Basilica called her life a wonderful work of divine grace. And speaking of her special love for persons suffering from leprosy, he said this, she saw in them the suffering face of Jesus. Like the Good Samaritan, she became their mother. So that's a beautiful story of a um, not very well-known saint. Uh, I don't know if any of you had heard of her before tonight, but I had not heard of her before I found her feast day and decided we would be talking about her. And so I love her. I love St. Damien already, and I love that she's connected to him and connected to love of lepers and taking care of the poor and the rejected. So at this point, we will be moving into the chaplet portion of St. Marianne, and her chaplet is a decade rosary, so it is in the formation of a decade rosary, which means we have a crucifix and an Our Father bead. We have 10 Hail Marys, and then we have the medal of St. Marianne Cope. And St. Marianne Cope does have silver medals, which is very cool. Very much easier to find. We didn't have to order from France. Um, at this point, I will be scrolling up to read all of your intentions. There is definitely time to continue adding your intentions into the comments, and I will lift them up at this time. I'd like to pray in thanksgiving for our Holy Rosary Catholic daughters for the gifts that they give of themselves and their time, talent, and treasure to serve our parish and serve our parishioners, the love that they show all people in our parish. I'm praying thanksgiving for Father Vipin, Father Oren, and Leanne, who hosted altar server training this weekend, which was pretty amazing. We had 13 new altar servers sign up, and then we had our regular 10 or 12, so we, I think we had 24 kids there at altar server training, which was amazing. So we pray for all those kids, and we pray for continued inspiration of children to be altar servers. It's such a gift to be able to work up on the altar during the Mass. All right. The Reyes family is here with their intentions. Michael would like to pray for all the animals. AJ would like to pray for your family, for my family, thank you, AJ, and for him to be healed. We pray for the healing of AJ. Aurora would like to pray for her test this week. Mia would like to pray for herself to find the lanyard that she lost. So we pray, we pray to St. Anthony and to St. Marianne to help you find that. Andy would like to pray for the Knights of Columbus basketball free throw contest that that will be successful. Amen. Love it. Lenora lifts up prayers for her grandchildren, her daughters, and her sisters, that they may walk without pain. Elena lifts up Marie Elena complications after having hand surgery. So we lift her up for healing. Bernice and Denise would like to pray for all those who suffer from depression. Mary would like to lift up more prayers for AJ. Denise would also like to lift up prayers for those suffering from depression. Jane would like to pray for a family member's healing. Mary would like to lift up prayers for our little flock. Debbie would like to, like to lift up prayers for her family members and friends that are sick. And also for you, Debbie, we pray for your healing. Sylvia. Hoping your, yours came again later. I just see prayers for and a, a colon. Mary would like to pray for the soul of Mike. 
Lisa Drobik's father. We pray for Lisa's family as well. Cleo would like to lift up prayers for her family and friends, prayers for all those dealing with cancer, anxiety, and with the flu and COVID, and continuous protection pr prayers for all police officers. Pat would like to lift up two of her friends who lost their husbands this weekend. So she would like to pray for the families of Mike Yankowick and Butch Schneider, and also her sister-in-law who lost her mother last week. My goodness, Pat, I'm so sorry. Becky would like to pray for all of her family and friends near and far. Debbie would like to pray that the insurance company approves the shots that will help stop her bleeding. Amen, Debbie. Amanda would like to pray for families who are struggling. Becky would like to pray for all Lamar CISD staff and every student. Cleo would like to lift up prayers for the soul and family of Anthony Galvin, who was tragically killed by road rage on Saturday, leaving behind his wife and three young children. Lenora would like to pray for Jesse's brother, who passed away on Friday. Denise would like to continue praying for AJ. Amanda would like to pray for her mom's healing. I'd like to pray in Thanksgiving for a successful delivery uh, for Grace and for their baby. I pray for um, the families and the victims of the plane crash in Nepal. Mm -hmm. I pray for our parish priests. I pray for all priests. I pray for an increase in... Um, the call to the priesthood and I pray for um, the mental health and well-being of all those discerning the priesthood and all those who are currently clergy. We pray for their strength and their healing and um, just in thanksgiving for their yes. I pray for our kids, I pray for you, all of your kids and your family members. they might draw ever closer to Jesus, our Savior. So we begin this chaplet on the crucifix in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you who gave us your commandment of love of God and neighbor and identified yourself in a special way with the most needy of your people, hear our prayer. Faithful to your teaching, St. Mary Ann Cope loved and served her neighbors, especially the most desolate outcasts. Giving herself generously and heroically for those aff afflicted by leprosy, she alleviated their physical and spiritual sufferings, thus helping them to accept their afflictions with patience. Her care and concern for others manifested the great love you have for us. Through her merits and intercession, Grant us the favor which we confidently ask of you, so that the people of God, following the inspiration of her life and apostolate, may practice charity towards all, according to your word and example. Amen. Amen. You want to do that for me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It feels incomplete without doing the glory be, so I'll just do that too. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We move on to the medal as we pray the closing prayer of St. Mary Ann Cope. St. Mary Ann, you were a martyr in spirit, laying down your life for those in need of your love and affection. You embraced the outcast wholeheartedly with joy and gratitude. Please pray for me that I may also seek out the outcasts in our world and help them come to know the love and mercy of our glorious God. St. Mary Ann, pray for me. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and, and of the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So the beautiful thing about a Decade Rosary Chaplet is you can keep that in your pocket, and you can pray the rosary using it with your new friend, St. Mary Ann, or you can pray her chaplet as well. So thank you all so much for joining us. If you would like a chaplet of St. Mary Ann Pope, please just let us know. Sharon and I love making y'all chaplets and getting them to you. Jane and Amanda, I believe we owe you some St. Barbara's, and those are coming, we promise. We had to get some new St. Barbara medals from France, so they're on their way. God bless you all. I hope you have an incredible week, a blessed week. I love starting the week off with y'all here, praying together. And as always, we pray that you sleep with the angels and rise, rise with, with the, the saints. saints. We love you all. See you next week for Chaplet Monday at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, where we will be getting to know St. Angela Maracy. See you next week. God bless. Bye-bye. Oh, Denise, I see that. I'll get you one.